demonstration on Ohm's law in particular. So don't forget to do a risk assessment when you're doing any of these things. Um, in this particular case, electric shock burns falls could be a problem. I'm simply keeping the voltages extremely low, our temperatures low, and keeping our leads and things well up off floors where they might become trip and fall hazards. So the practice today is to determine resistance or determining resistance. We're going to do that a few different ways. The first way is we're going to look at resistance from the components label and what does that tell us. Then we're going to determine the resistance using an ohmmeter, so simply measuring the resistance. Then we're going to determine the resistance by measuring the voltage and the current at three different voltages, therefore three different currents, and then doing some calc. And then we're going to look at confirming our ohms law in step four. So let's look at our basic circuit. This is our, our basic circuit. And I'll just uh, set the pen. So we've got a battery supplying the voltage. And as I've already mentioned, we're going to be looking using three batteries, uh, 1.5 volts, uh, then 3 volts, then 4.5 volts, approximately. We're going to uh, measure the current with an ammeter, which we're going to put in series. Our resistor, which we've nominated at 10 ohms. And then we'll be looking at the voltages accurately that has actually dropped across our resistor. So it's a simple series circuit. Remembering, of course, that we always put an ammeter in series and we put a voltmeter in parallel. So here's our little uh, training rig that I'm, I'm using. And here's the resistor you can see down here. Not sure whether you could read it properly, so I blew the pitch up a little bit. And here's the, the bigger version of it. So we've got 5W, meaning 5 watts. It's a 5 watt resistor. You can handle 5 watts of uh, power coming out of it. It's 10R meaning it's 10 ohms, and the J is the tolerance. So over on the right-hand side here, you'll see I've got a table, and this is the table for letter nominated tolerances, B, C, D, F, G, J, K, and M. So obviously this is a J, so it's telling us we have a 5% tolerance. So we know that we have 10R, and it's plus or minus 5%. So if we work out what 1% of 10 ohms is, it's 0.5 of an ohm, 0 0.5. Therefore, the range of our resistor is from 9.5, that's half an ohm down from 10, up to 10.5 or half an ohm above 10 ohms. So 9.5 to 10 ohms is the range. So our first way to determine resistance is simply to be able to look at the resistor and be able to read off the resistance value. Next, we're going to use an ohm meter, and you can see here my multimeter is uh, connected directly across the resistor under test, and it's telling us that it's 10.3 ohms. And you can see I've got the multimeter set to ohms. So well and truly our 10.3 fits nicely inside the tolerance range that we saw by reading that from the resistor. So that makes sense that it's about the, uh, the right value. So the reality is our 10 ohm resistor is somewhere in the order of 10.3. So next we're going to now apply some voltages to it and measure some currents. So let's have just a quick explanation of our circuit again. So our circuit starts on the positive side of the battery and we come out through a switch, which is here on the training aid, through the switch, 
then down through the multimeter, through the meter itself, back along the negative lead, as you can see here, and back to this side of the resistor. Then the resistor itself comes along the black lead, back to the negative on the battery. So nice, simple circuit, giving us our battery. So here's our batteries one, battery two, battery three being 1.5 each. So looking at our first battery in circuit, we are reading 1.549 volts. And you can see I've now moved the voltage selected to the voltage DC scale. So 1.5 volts and 0 0.14 amps. So resistance is the voltage divided by the current. That's the physics relationship that we're talking about. R equals V divided by I. So 1.4 sorry, 1.549 divided by 0 0.14 tells us 11 ohms. So that's very close to our 10.3. Um, any small variations would probably be variations in the accuracy of the meters, maybe a little bit of resistance in the leads, those kinds of things. So very, very close. So next, same circuit again, but this time the only significant um, difference here is that we now have two batteries. So you can see here I've connected two batteries and put them in series. So we've now got 1.5 in series with 1.5. All the rest of the circuit remains the same. And you can see our voltage is so close to 3 volts that it doesn't matter, 3.015. And our current is now at 0 0.28. So our voltage at a little over 3 volts, our current at 0.28 amps. So again, doing the calc, voltage divided by current, we end up with 10.8 ohms, so even closer this time. So with our 3 volts, very, very close to the 10.3 um, that we measured, and certainly within the appropriate realms of the value of resistance. Now, finally, you can see we've added uh, three batteries now in series. So there's one to two, two to three, and we're now drawing almost four and a half volts, 4.415. The current has gone up to 0.41 of an amp. And again, we do the calc and we get 10.8 ohms again. So obviously the resistor hasn't changed, but as the voltage has gone up, the current has gone up in relationship to it. And that's the way the physics works and that's the purpose of this demonstration. So all I've done now is tabulate the results that we got and put them in this table. So over here we have our voltages, our currents and our resistance. So the resistance very very consistent. So very consistent. So very, very consistent. And as you notice, the relationship between voltage and current, if you remember, they were voltage is proportional to current. That's the actual physics. So if the voltage goes up, the current must also go up. And we can see that happening here. On the next line, we go up we double the voltage, so voltage goes up times 2, and the current goes up times 2. And we take the voltage up again with our 4.45, add another 1.5 volts to it, and again the current goes up proportionally. 
So what I've done here with this graph, I've simply put the voltages across the bottom. So this is the volts on the horizontal and the current on the vertical and I've graphed it and you can see it's a perfectly straight line. So the blue line perfectly straight telling us that there is what we'll call a linear a linear relationship between voltage and current. In other words they're directly proportional. If the voltage goes up in this direction then the current must go up. And the converse is true. If for some reason the current goes up in this direction, then the voltage must also have gone up. So as long as the resistor doesn't change, you have this directly proportional relationship between voltage and current. So what are some of the observations? So the graph is a straight line. So what does this indicate about the resistance? Is it a constant or is it a variable? Well, the linear relationship, the fact that it's a straight line, tells us very clearly that this is a consistent thing. So this line here represents a 10 ohm response between voltage and current. So there's a 10 ohm relational response between current and voltage. And that's what the straight line represents. So we can also use this graph then to determine other things. So use the graph to determine the current if the voltage is 3.6. So if my voltage is 3.6, so here's roughly 3 volts. Uh, about here is going to be 4 volts. So 4 is going to be roughly here. Therefore 3.5 is here. 3.6 is going to be roughly here. So this is going to be our 3.6 roughly. And if we project our up on our curve and we go in here, I haven't done that too well, have I? 3.6 is going to be, try and draw it a bit straighter. So we're going to be up around here. So somewhere about, somewhere between 3.5 and 3.6 amps. So you can use our curve to determine other values. From our general observations, what is the relationship between voltage and current? And I keep hounding this because we say that the relationship between voltage and current is directly proportional. So this relationship between voltage and current is directly directly proportional. Directly proportional. If voltage goes up, current must follow. If voltage goes down, current must follow. They are intrinsically connected together in this directly proportional relationship. So that brings us to the end of our prac. I hope you've enjoyed that and learned a little bit more about the physics of DC.